thanks for joining us here in Geneva for the AI for Good Global Summit 2018. My next guest is Francesca Rossi. She is AI Ethics Global Leader at IBM Research. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. So you were here in Geneva this year co-organizing a, a track on trust. And you've introduced this concept, it's the Trust Factory. So what can you tell us about it? So yeah, so while we were uh, thinking about how to put together this track for the summit, uh, the Trust in AI track, so we brainstormed among the, you know, the organizers uh, how we wanted to structure it, what topic we wanted to have. So we decided to uh, structure this track around uh, three teams, uh, along three different dimensions that we think Trust in AI can be spelled out. So the, for us, uh, it should be trust between the users of an AI system and the AI system itself. So the system should be um, trustworthy in the sense that maybe is not biased, is fair, is uh, explainable, uh, and uh, I the way it uses the data of the of the user is transparent and things like that. Then another dimension uh, is trust uh, among uh, different uh, stakeholders involved in, an, uh, in AI and among different uh, uh, communities, among different corporations uh, producing AI that should collaborate uh, beyond the fact that they may compete on the marketplace, uh, but also trust among different uh, cultures that may have a different idea of how AI should be developed, deployed, and used, uh, and so on. Uh, and um, and so and, and and then by thinking about all these different dimensions, you know, we put together nine uh, different projects uh, that we presented yesterday during the track, and uh, many people involved. You know, few people involved in each one of these nine projects. So in a very concrete way, we thought about this whole uh, trust in AI, which we think is very fundamental in building uh, uh, AI. Uh, and then we were thinking, well, but these nine projects, you know, after all, are just uh, um, nine examples of how AI should be uh, thought about, and what we, how we, you know, what is the main, really core thing that we should think about uh, when deploying and developing AI. So why don't we think about expanding the track and going beyond what we can say in one day at the summit, and what we can put together and start at the summit, and let's uh, launch this idea of a kind of a global incubator for um, whoever wants to put together a project on uh, building a trustworthy AI. And the main motivation for the track and also for this idea of the global incubator is that we think that uh, if AI is not trustworthy, then it will not be adopted as widely as it could be. And these uh, benefits would not be uh, exploited by us. And uh, it's not good to, uh, to under trust AI because we would not be able, to, if we don't trust AI uh, enough, then we would not be able to get all the benefits that it can give. But also if we trust it too much, also it's very bad because we are uh, giving, assuming that it has capabilities that maybe it doesn't have. So that's not going to be good. So we really want to build AI that, uh, uh, that we can understand what's the correct level of trust. And so this idea of trust, the trust factory, and we already have a website, trustfactory.ai, uh, is you know to really uh, continue and expand the work that we did for the track and put it at a global level and also in, in a long term rather than one year like these nine projects will be. So once trust is established, that's where we can start reaping the benefits of AI. So let's talk about the benefits a, a bit more because you are involved in many initiatives to use AI as a force for good. Yeah. So. Yes, so uh, there, there in the last, uh, I would say, uh, two years or two years and a half, there has been really a um, huge amount of initiative that have been started, research centers, uh, um, units within corporations uh, or within universities or within governments, uh, um, uh, declarations, uh, uh, strategies for AI in Europe, everywhere, uh, China, Russia, US, whatever. And uh, so around, you know, really trying to understand what it means to build AI that is beneficial for individuals, for societies, and uh, 
uh, and trustworthy and in a, in a responsible way such that not only the AI is is tr can be trusted but also the corporation building the AI can be trusted and so uh, really, there are many, many different initiatives. Uh, IBM, which is the company where I work, has, uh, has inside a lot of initiatives, both from the research point of view. There are a lot of papers that are being published regularly around how to detect uh, bias in data, how to mitigate uh, and how to recognize bias, even if you don't have access to training data, how to make AI system uh, more explainable. Um, and uh, so from the research point of view, uh, how to make them value alignment, to make sure that they follow some optimization criteria, you know, to reach some objective, but at the same time also they follow some uh, ethical guidelines that may be relevant for the task that they are trying to, to address. And so inside there is a lot of work in terms of research, but also work uh, in terms of uh, collaborating with uh, the rest of the world in trying to understand what it means to build this re uh, um, responsible AI. So for example, IBM uh, has uh, the, um, published a data responsibility policy. So IBM is a company where we don't want to, we are not going to reuse the data of our clients for other clients or other uh, tasks. And that of course uh, is very, you know, um, uh, very uh, attractive for our clients, but on the other hand, put us in a kind of a more difficult position because of course, if you have less data, then, uh, you know, your machine learning approaches, your data driven approaches have less data they can work with. So we have to compensate with other things like uh, symbolic AI, domain knowledge, reasoning, and so on. So. Um, data responsibility policy. Then we, we publish the principles for the cognitive era, we call them, where we state explicitly what's the purpose for the AI that we want to build. And the purpose for us, for AI, is very clear. If for us, AI should augment human intelligence and not replacing it. So that means that we are focused on that that kind of AI because we are working to help other companies to use AI in whatever they need to do. So to want to build AI that helps professionals do their job as as best uh, as uh, well as possible. And then uh, in this other initiative, so we are, for example, founding members uh, together with the uh, other uh, five companies of the partnership on AI. So the partnership on AI was funded by six companies, uh, among which IBM, um, IBM, Amazon, Apple, uh, Google DeepMind, Facebook, uh, and Microsoft. And uh, from these six companies, uh, we started this idea of a platform for, uh, for uh, discussion, uh, multidisciplinary, multi-stakeholder discussion on issues related to the pervasive deployment of AI in our society and the impact of AI. Uh, we decided that this initiative was going to be open not just to companies but to many other stakeholders like NGOs, civil societies, uh, universities, professional associations. So now we have 53 partners uh, starting from six uh, uh, or, um, and in beginning of 2017. Now we are 53 partners of which only I think about 30% are companies and everybody else is a non for profit because we think that only this very multi stakeholder approach can help really understand what the issues are, identify them, define them and resolve them and possibly get to the best practices on how to deal with these issues. And we are addressing the issues of deployment of AI in our society from different thematic pillars, we call them. So one is uh, fair, transparent and accountable AI. So you want to make AI that is fair, transparent, explainable, accountable and so on. The second one is uh, called the safety critical AI, which includes uh, um, all those AI systems where there could be decisions which are uh, life and death decisions, like for example, healthcare or uh, self-driving cars or other things. Then another one uh, is uh, AI and jobs, the impact of AI and jobs. Uh, another one is human AI collaboration. So, so if you want the AI system to work together with humans and to make it a real team, uh, there are issues that you have to resolve uh, to make sure that really there is uh, effective teamwork between humans and machines. 
So all these addressed in a very you know diverse and inclusive environment. And we hope that the output will be in the various working groups of the partnership on AI will be really uh, guidelines, best practices, uh, uh, better understanding, uh, deep understanding what, what the issues are in every possible sector of uh, um, deployment of AI. And the fact that this initiative, uh, uh, compared to all the other ones uh, that are more academic oriented, this one has this uh, presence of the companies, uh, I think that is, is very unique and brings uh, um, the voice of the you know of those that know what happens when you deploy AI to the real world. A final question about the summit itself, yeah, because you were here last year during yeah. the launch uh, of the event. How do you reflect on the work has been achieved and on this year's summit, uh, which is more action orientated? Yes. So yeah. So uh, the, I think the two summits are. Um, uh, represent an evolution of the overall field of uh, trying to build AI for good. Uh, so last year, it was very good to have these two communities, the UN agencies on one side, so the, the which means the institutions that can know what problems need to be solved, like for example, the sustainable develop those related to the sustainable development goals, and on the other side, the AI community. And these two communities needed to know each other and to understand each other, the terminology, the issues, the um, and and so last year was, I think, uh, not very concrete and actionable because there was the need for the two community to just talk to each other and know each other. But this year, I think, is much more uh, concrete and actionable. So these uh, uh, four um, um, tracks that happened in day two are were really very, very concrete. Today we saw, I mean, I could on, only join my track, of course, I didn't see the other ones, but today we saw the summaries and they were all very concrete and uh, um, specific list of projects with uh, uh, a specific timeline and meaning that in 12 months at the next summit we hope that all the project you know some track had our track had nine projects another track i think it had uh, four or five another had uh, i think 15. so really uh, in one year we will see really a lot of concrete results and i think that this reflects overall uh, the state of the of the discussion where uh, there was an initial period of time uh, where the different communities, uh, the different experts of various disciplines needed to know each other and understand each other. And now they're ready to be more concrete uh, and to produce uh, co specific outputs. Francesca Rossi, thank you very much. You're welcome.